Last part of the STO series, we arrived in the Nakul system with the intent to deploy the Lucari-made Stellar Rejuvenator in order to restore this sun. This was all to repair damage done by the Tholians in part of the Temporal Cold War, and we're under the scrutiny of the Nakul fleet as they observe our attempts at fixing their star. The lead on this mission is Admiral Kumaki, but we soon encountered errors, the culprit of which was triangulated to a point closer to the sun and revealed to be Tholians. This is not great, considering that Akul's recent history with them and the Tholians' tendency to be hostile. Whatever they're doing, they've created a web around some anomaly, and their actions are destabilising the Nakul star, creating ripples in space-time out from the event, and if we want to repair this sun, we need them to stop. So, Kumaki. Tholians. On a scale of 1 to 10, how mad are the Nakul gonna be, and are we gonna get caught in the middle of this? One thing is certain. We have a limited amount of time to determine what they are doing here before the Nakul detect them. Considering their turbulent history, I doubt the Tholians will receive a cordial greeting from Representative Kartek or his forces. Then we're on the same page. Let's see what we can do here before the Nakul notice, because yeah, things are going to escalate. This is peculiar. The Tholians are known for their aggression in response to alien forces. And yet they haven't scanned us, or gone to battle readiness. It's as if they are... ignoring us. Not even a glance in our direction? I guess whatever they're doing is occupying their attention. Let's hail them, let's see if we can establish a communication. Attention Tholian forces! I am Admiral Kumarke of the LSS Raskava. You have violated Nakul space and are disrupting a critical procedure here. I'm instructing you to cease all activities and explain your presence in this system immediately. The border violation is inconsequential. Our work takes priority. We will continue. Do not interfere. Your continued presence is unnecessary. Lord Gascane, your transponder marks you as generally polite to introduce yourself, just saying. <laughs> anyway, whatever that experiment is, it's creating after effects and destabilizing the local space-time and that star. The loss of this star is acceptable to us. Further discussion is irrelevant. Leave now or you will be fired upon. Acceptable to... Yeah. Well, of course it's acceptable to you, it's not your star. It's... Your argument's irrelevant. Tholian vessels are going to battle stations. They're moving into attack formation. I'm trying to be very Federation about this, but oh my god, Tholius. Battle stations! Tactical. Aim to disable, not destroy. I'm not sure they'll reciprocate that courtesy, Admiral. We need answers, Captain, and it's rather difficult to get them from the dead. Understood. Firing to disable only. Well, that went about as well as expected. Six Tholian vessels for your and three mesh weavers, break off to intercept us while their flagship, the TAS Vintak, remains at its lattice, continuing their work. We hold fire, and just in case there's any chance for a non-violent solution, but are soon having to return their hostility in kind. As Kumaki suggests, however, we aim to disable, not destroy. After all, we still need answers, but more than that. I just don't want this to escalate into a larger conflict. Tholian vessels drift and their impulse and weapons offline, we're free to try to resume talking. Curious. The Tholian flagship did not engage us in battle. Instead they remained on station, diverting all non-essential power to their web generator systems. Even their shields are down. What are they doing here? The Tholians are not want to leave themselves vulnerable, but if their shields are indeed down, could go take a look. Preliminary scans suggest that the Tholian flagship is creating an incredibly powerful energy web lattice around a spatial anomaly. 
There is no target vessel within the web. No vessel within the trap, but I definitely see something in there shimmering away. So let's start with taking a deep scan on that, shall we? This is most unfortunate. The source of the multiphasic waves lies within the Tholian energy lattice. Furthermore, the waves are increasing in intensity, accelerating the decay of the Nakul star's core. Yeah, I figured. If the decay is accelerating, we can't have much time. Left unchecked, this procedure the Tholians are conducting will cause a complete collapse of the stellar core, resulting in a supernova. Oh, not another bloody one. Recommendations? I believe a boarding action is in order. We'll disable the Tholian web generator on board the flagship to stop the procedure. I've sent transporter coordinates. Prepare your away team for action. I shall meet you aboard the Tholian vessel. All right, I happen to agree with you, but just to double check some things, you are aware of Tholian habitation. They live in class Y environments and they're not exactly friendly. So expect a very hot welcome, but not a warm one. I'm quite aware of Tholian hospitality. As you recall, I've experienced it firsthand at your side, aboard Caldano's ship. You will need my expertise on this mission. I'm afraid I won't take no for an answer. Captain Onvame, remain on Overwatch and report any changes to the Tholian vessel. The second point I want to raise is that the Tholian ship has shields. They're just not raised because the power is being diverted to their emitters. If they do raise their shields, we cannot return. An acceptable risk. What matters most is stopping that procedure and saving the Nakul Star. We'll deal with any unforeseen challenges as they present themselves. Agreed? Agreed. And if Kumaki is resorting to this sort of action, I guess we really don't have much time. We beam over to the Tholian ship in full environmental suits. The interiors are much as we experienced before. The Tholians have a very strange relation with spatial awareness that is reflected in their ships, creating disorientating surfaces and consoles on walls and corridors in the ceiling. The temperature in here is over 200 degrees Celsius and the atmosphere methane and chlorine. Let's make haste. The Tholians will muster their security forces once they detect us, and combat could lead to our EV suits being compromised. If that happens, we won't last long in the hostile environment here. Let's begin by scanning the access terminals in this chamber. Find one with main computer access and use it to get a layout of the ship. Once we have that, we can identify the best route to the web generator system and disable it. Right. And en route, check the walls, corners, every hatch could be a door. Let's start with that console over there. We make our way through the shimmering heat to the selected console. Hmm. That console is dedicated to life support only. No access to the systems we're looking for. We'll have to try another. This is a medical console, keyed only to Tholian anatomy. Try another console. One of them is bound to have access to the data we require. Got it! Gather what information you can before the Tholians lock us out of the system. Interesting. The entire vessel is designed around the web generator system. Quite the unorthodox variant of this ship class, but very effective nonetheless. Ah, specialty vessel then, but still, how do we disable the web generator? Quite so. Judging by the power readings, we can follow the spine of the craft down this corridor to where the web generators are. Unfortunately, that chamber is locked during use. Safety or security? Either way, we need to get through it. There's an engineering node nearby. We may be able to cut the power to the web generators from there. Once the system is down, we should be able to gain access to the generators and disable them. Okay, we've got a bit of a walk ahead of us. Eyes open, weapons out. The engineering node is through that door and down the hall. Watch out for security. The Tholians know we're here now. Many of the corridors we travel down here are locked tight to us, so we proceed the only way we can, right towards a room of Tholian security. Tholian security ahead. Neutralize them so we can access the computers in this node. Oh then, what are the chances they'll just, you know, tell us what we're here to know? 
Hello, could I interest you in some Himalayan salt pants? We're clear. Let's run a bypass on that console while we can. This is remarkable. The webs are somehow penetrating multiple dimensions simultaneously. They appear to be solidifying elements of space-time between these dimensions, repairing damage to the very fabric of reality. Wait, so this is a repair job? That's annoying because that sounds like something we should be helping, but it's causing too much damage. There are two spinnerets, shall we say, that emit the energy used to generate the web in space. They all need to be neutralized. Once they're done, we can disable the web generator's primary core and the entire system will be offline. Right. Please tell me we can do it from this console. Unfortunately, no. Their security is blocking access. We'll need to bypass that at a nearby security node. Alright, let's make tracks. Wait a moment. I'd like to access the Astrometrics console here. Find more data on the anomaly. Very well, that makes sense. We'll just have to, you know, keep it quick. The Tholians have compiled a detailed list of space-time anomalies throughout known space. Judging by the star dates, they've been at this for quite some time. Centuries, in fact. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. We keep similar documentation after all, but the Tholians do seem to be rather obsessive over this sort of thing. Yes. This system is listed as a primary concern due to repeated temporal damage to the fabric of space-time. Time travel. The Nakul have done and will use it again because of their involvement in the Temporal Cold War. Indeed. The Tholian distaste for time travel is well known. It may explain our actions here today. According to log entries, this ship has been sent to prevent a trans-dimensional vortex from forming in the system. Ah, as much as I would like to help out with that, right now their methods will collapse the Nakul system entirely. Which brings us back to why we're here. Let's access this science console. I have a key. Look out! More Tholians! Well, you can access it in a minute. As I was saying, let's access this console. It may provide some key information. Hmm. It occurs to me that protomatter could be used as part of this process. Well, good job we happen to have the Alliance's preeminent scientist on protomatter. The problem with the Tholian method is, ironically, time. The time it takes for their web generators to repair the damage to space-time is allowing for the generation of the pulse waves. The more damage is repaired, the stronger the waves become. They could use a catalyst of some sort. I believe the integration of protomatter into the process could hasten the repair time considerably, to the point where the pulse wave generation would be minimal, if not eliminated entirely. Unfortunately, I don't think the Tholians are going to stop attacking us long enough for us to present them with this solution. Agreed. But it's the best idea I have at the moment. I'd like to study the web generators more thoroughly before we make a decision neither of us can live with. Oh, I'm open to any sort of alternatives to all of this. But for now, let's keep moving. I have what I need. Let's proceed to the security node and unlock the doors to the web generator. So, it sounds like the Tholians, for all their troublemaking, are in fact Look out! trying to- Ambush! Okay, hang on. The security node is on the other side of these doors. Let's clear the room and get to work. Tholians have always had a strong distaste for the disruption of space-time. Time travel in particular seems to really irk them, and this might be tied to their ordered existence and communal lattice-like biology. It's just natural for them to find such disruptions undesirable. They routinely are found investigating temporal and dimensional incursions, such as the disappearance of the Defiant in 2268, Caldano's vessel in 2152, and a Terran incursion on Nukara Prime in 2409. All clear. Everyone, gather up. We need a plan. And here we are. I'll need some time to bypass their security system. Alright, we'll cover the entrances while you work. Please do. 
I prefer to face as little Tholian hospitality as possible, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, just please be quick about it. I doubt they're going to perceive us as trying to help after we shot our way through their ship. So, Kamaki seeks for a way to integrate protomatter technology into the Tholian process. It looks like, in this instance at least, they've identified a tear into another dimension or universe that they're trying to close. Their web-spinning tech has been modified to pierce through every layer that the instability crosses, and they can then force it shut gradually. However, this is causing ripples to ride through the surrounding space, which is aggravating the Nakul star. If the Lucari protomatter can accelerate the process, well, we can close it all in one go without the dangerous exacerbating of reality. After a very long firefight, eventually we have the area secured. Security bypass in effect. And I found something rather peculiar. Oh, you mean another thing? It appears the Tholians have no system to denote transdimensional differences in cultures. While they are aware of other dimensions besides this one, they simply do not consider the denizens of those places to be any different from those here. So they don't differentiate between the humans of one dimension and another. That's strange. An anomaly created by the Terran Empire is grouped in the same range as one created by the Federation. Because of this, Tholian actions taken on anomalies in other dimensions could lead to trouble here and ours. Such actions could be seen as acts of war. I see. Does that mean that the Tholians, across all dimensions, are like a unified culture, and they therefore perceive this to be true of others? That's very troublesome, especially when, you know, Terrans are concerned. No wonder the Tholians are so hostile if they perceive us all to be the same. Proceed with caution. There must be a reason those doors are locked when the device is The main web generator is ahead. Get ready for a fight! The web room is protected, of course, but not as many as we previously encountered. After dispatching the security team present, we take a look around. There are two more chambers off to the sides, behind doors, and in the centre of the room is an energised beam of light, the unique tractor beam technology of the Tholians. Get to the spinneret controls in two adjacent rooms and shut them both down. Can't just deactivate the entire system from here then? Doing so could overload the bypass relays and send a power surge into the vessel's warp core, resulting in a breach. When both spinnerets are deactivated, we can return here and safely disengage the primary projector. Okay, one, two, and then back here. Understood. The spinneret controls are just ahead! Disable them! That's one spinneret offline. Let's get to the second one. Large crystals focus the energies of the main generator and remain glowing even when disabled. That's one down, onto the second. Turn to the initial room positioned between the two spinnerets. Right. We need to disengage the primary projector from the main web generator now. Not to keep poking holes in your plan, but um, what happens if they just turn it back on? I'll use an encryption algorithm to lock them out of the controls. That should buy us the time we need to implement a better solution to the problem. So, we really are just winging this until we can find a better solution. Okay, no, nope, let's go with it. Tholian web generator is inoperative. We did it. We should beam back as soon as... <gasps> Wait! They've raised their shields! We're trapped! Your 
Prince Yuri. You do this all. Um. Carle? Lord Kuskene arrives in a Tholian environmental battle suit, usually reserved for planet-side missions outside of their native Class Y atmospheres. This tanky creation offers many layers of protection, additional shielding, and more formidably heavy armaments, like a Conal 4 cannon that can completely take out anyone caught in the beam. Alongside this, he calls in frequent security teams that add to the complexity of the fight, and there is always the risk of being stuck in place by their webs while he charges his primary cannon. Eventually, we whittle down his shielding, and sustained fire breaks through the next suit. We then have to take care of the remaining soldiers before a voice cuts through the conflict ending. Cease hostilities. I mean you no harm. Looking around for the voice, we find a Tholian has strolled into the room and seems more eager to talk, so we carefully approach. Hold your fire. I am now the ranking officer aboard this vessel, and I wish to discuss matters with you peacefully. Interesting. You're actually speaking Federation Standard, not using a Universal Translator. Correct. Long ago, I traveled alongside the crew of the USS Enterprise under the command of Captain James T. Kirk. While among their crew, I was given the designation Bright Eyes by my good friend Nyota Uhura. Bright Eyes first appeared in a Year 5 comic, Issue 7, set aboard the Enterprise in 2270. They were rescued from Lloyd Zeta 9 and received medical care. Initially, there was much mistrust on both sides, but eventually, Uhura managed to establish a common form of communication between them, and Bright Eyes was even made an honorary cadet for some time. We realized that you were trying to repair an anomaly in space time here, but your procedure is damaging the Nakul Star to critical levels. Right. However, Admiral Kamaraki has been working on a way to expedite your process to the benefit of us all. I am prepared to hear your proposal, Admiral, but we must speak quickly. It is only a matter of time before my fellow Tholians on other vessels regroup, and you will find they are not as understanding as I am. Yes, I doubt many have spent time among non-Tholians, so let's hear what you've got. I propose a coordinated effort between our ships and yours. We can integrate a protomatter matrix into the web lattice your ship generates, increasing the speed at which the rupture is sealed. By doing so, the frequency of pulse waves generated by the repair process will be reduced to acceptable levels, ending the damage to the nearby star. See? She's very clever. Do you think this will work for you? Yes, yes. I believe the Admiral's proposal will solve both problems efficiently, but we'll need to move fast. Yes, please. I would rather this not escalate any further. Use these access codes to override the encryption and re-enable the web generator. The web generator is back online. Let's coordinate next steps from our respective vessels. With the generator reactivated and Bright Eyes working alongside us from his end, we've been back to the armager. However, there has been a development. Uh, apparently the Nakul have become curious as to what we're up to and have moved in to investigate, uh, bringing with them their entire armada. We have a situation. The Nakul have detected the Tholian force here and have dispatched their fleet to our location. Oh, we've just established an accord with the Tholians. Things can escalate. Quicker than you think, unfortunately. Though I gave Representative Katek every assurance that the situation was under control here. He refused to believe me. He said the Nakul would deal with the Tholians, and if we got in their way... I get the picture. There's a lot of bad blood here between the Nakul and the Tholians. Okay, um... I take it you've heard the news. Yes, just now. I think we stick with the plan, but we do it quickly. Bright Eyes and I will do our best to implement our plan, but we'll need time and protection. Any Tholian vessels you can restore to battle readiness will be of great assistance. 
We'll do what we can. Armored oh, out. Here they come. Every Tholian ship repaired will be an ally in this conflict. Restore Tholian ships if possible. We need all the help we can get. Remember, aim to disable, not destroy. We begin by restoring as many of the Tholian ships as we can, getting them operational. Hopefully the battle does not result in any more casualties, but the McCool are out for vengeance. Several ships do take shots at us, but fortunately this battle is not one about winning, we just need to buy time. Unfortunately, the Stark is struck by the Nakul forces and the field fails completely. of swirling energy, a sinkhole into something else. And the Treloon is gone. The fighting ceases for a moment as everyone reassesses. Our web generator is offline and we've suffered critical damage. If we don't seal the vortex soon, we may not get another chance. All right, is there anything we can do to help? What, wait, what do you mean another chance? The Vortex is destabilizing the star at an accelerated rate. If we do not seal it soon, the star will reach supernova status. Oh, joy. Kamaki, plan? Right. The protomatter matrix is stable, so we need to reinforce the Tholian web lattice as soon as possible. Right, reinforcing it. Bright eyes, how do we go about doing that? Quickly. I have sent the schematics for web stitching probes to you. Deploy them around the perimeter of the vortex. Each one will extrude a protomatter thread to my vessel. When all six probes are in position, we can energize the web and seal the vortex. And that should stabilize the star? Admiral Kumarke and I believe that sealing the vortex in this manner will allow the star to regenerate back to its previous state. But we must do so soon. All right then. We'll get the replicators on those probes and we'll deploy them. Deploy the stitching probes at the designated coordinates. We need to energize the web soon in order to save the Nicole Star. Place the stitching probes quickly. Then energize the web. Web projector link established. Web projector link established. We begin deploying the Tholian probes around the circumference of the vortex while the Nakul finally make their move again. Once more they seem to target anyone or anything including us, but our goal is not to engage them, only to establish this web of devices. Six of them. We manage to deploy the majority of them, and these rainbow beams of protomatter pulse down the Tholian technology, creating a unifying point of the vortex. Stitching probes are engaged. Energize the web! Weaving emitter engaged. All functions under. Protomatter matrix initiated. All ships withdraw to a safe distance at once. That fantastic display, the vortex instability vanishes and the fighting ceases. The Nakul star is still dim, but no longer in danger of decay. Mission accomplished. It appears I owe you an apology. My science team informs me that our star has been saved by you, the Lucari, and the Tholians. That it indeed has, Representative Katak. 
Our wish for a revitalized star will have to wait until more research on our star's instability can be conducted. Though it seems we have a new wish to make today. Yes, it's more stable than it was. So tell me, what is this new wish? A wish for peace between the Nakul and the Tholians. Today we saw Tholians risk their lives to preserve our sun, despite our belligerence. If they are willing to do that, perhaps they will be willing to broker an end to hostilities between us. I certainly wish you luck, Representative. The Tholians may reciprocate that desire. They are certainly more complicated than they appear. The Vortex remains closed, and our forces will be returning to Tholian space shortly. Good to hear. The Nicole might be looking for peace, but best not push your luck. <laughs> Thank you for your assistance today, Bright Eyes. As a people, we are reluctant to work alongside non-Tholians, especially on matters we believe to be a result of their negligence. There will be many questions about today's events from our leaders. I will encourage them to put aside their xenophobic tendencies and collaborate with the Alliance on the Vortex issue. That would be welcome. It will not be easy to be sure, but it is an effort I am willing to make, no matter the risk to my career or standing. I trust you will do the same when your leaders seek a solution to the problem. Oh, for sure. Honestly, we were unaware there was a problem, so you have my word. Very good. I shall leave you then with the words of an old friend. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life, Bright Eyes, and have a safe journey. There are days out here where the beauty mystery and excitement make all the work and sacrifice worthwhile and then there are days like today yes there has been sacrifice today but we saved the star and nothing is gained without risk of course and today we risked all but not everyone lived to see our success true but it could have been far far worse if we hadn't been here Indeed. May the captain and crew of the Treloon find peace within the light in Lucar's name. We shall honour their sacrifice, and for what it's worth, I believe the Nakul will too. I spoke with Bright Eyes earlier, and we both agreed to share all of the data we gathered today freely to anyone willing to work on the Vortex issue, regardless of their affiliation. Now is not the time to hoard information. Now is the time to act before the vortices cause irreparable damage to space-time. Agreed. Looking over the data, it looks like the Tholians have recorded several more of these instabilities. I doubt this is the last time we'll be working together, Admiral. Armature out. So, the Vortex is sealed up and the Nakul star is not, well, saved. However, it has been prevented from worsening. More research is needed before it can be fixed by the sounds of it. Apparently today was not the fated day to repair the damage done. But it looks like there are new issues. If these vortices are caused by time travel, then, well, the Federation is certainly part of the problem. Starfleet Command has placed a high priority on repairing the numerous reality vortices you've discovered. Analysts are working on a list of vortices to close, based on their level of stability and potential danger to the systems they're located in. Admiral Kumarke will spearhead this operation but she'll need your help once the time comes to begin the Vortex repair procedures. I'll be in touch when the Admiral is ready to go. Well then, I guess there's nothing to do but start stitching up the mess we made. Well, not just us, but hey, you know. Thank you for watching this part of the Star Trek Online story series. I've been Rick and I'll see you again for another episode. Eventually. Thanks again, and goodbye. Status report! We have survived a transdimensional shunt, Captain. We are operating under emergency power, sir. Warp and impulse drives are offline. Restore main power as soon as possible, Engineer. What is our current position? Unable to verify, Captain. None of the nearby star systems appear on our navigational charts. Broaden your scan. Look for any recognizable systems. Sir, 
Incoming warp signature detected. Unidentified vessel entering the system. Any sign of hostility? It is beautiful. Incoming hail, sir. Let's see what our new friends have to say.